What's this? Well, first, I'll tell you what it's not. This isn't deep fried food that you'd find at the county fair, even though it is a raspberry pie. And no, I'm not trying to make a raspberry pie talk with radio waves. What this is, is a router on a stick. Let me show you what this means and how to make one. No stick required. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Oris, and in this episode, we're setting up a router on a stick with a Raspberry Pi 5 and OpenWRT. A router on a stick, or a one-arm router, is a router with just one Ethernet port. Yes, it's true. You don't need two Ethernet ports, as we most often think. My last Raspberry Pi router had a USB Ethernet port because I thought I needed it. Some comments addressed how USB Ethernet will go bad over extended periods of usage, and there's a chance that would happen, as most of these USB devices aren't designed to be used as router ports. It's not ideal, but it worked. So how does this work, and why is it on a stick? Well, it's actually quite simple. As we already know with VLANs from my prior videos, you can make one physical Ethernet port into many logical virtual Ethernet ports. So that means we can create a WAN, a LAN, or many of both on this one Ethernet port. This makes a Raspberry Pi a great candidate for this type of configuration and is why I felt compelled to try it out and get it working. It's on a stick because it's on one ethernet cable that it uses, resembling the stick. I don't come up with the naming, I just go with it. Briefly, looking at a diagram, we see WAN connected to the switch as VLAN 2, and LAN connected as VLAN 1. Then, the switch has a trunk port carrying VLANs 1 and 2 that's connected to our Raspberry Pi router. This one connection will carry all of our networks, regardless of how many VLANs we create. It's really as simple as that. This Raspberry Pi 5 running OpenWRT will handle all the inter-VLAN routing between the networks we create. But in order to do that, there's a catch. We must have a layer 3 switch. Otherwise, we can't take any traffic in and out from the Raspberry Pi. It moves the VLANs across different ports so that we can connect different devices like access points, computers, or anything else you can hardline in. On that topic, I noticed that a router on a stick is more common than I thought. I came upon this realization when using OpenWRT on a Netgear R6080, a router that I use quite often for testing. While researching for this video and using this router, I noticed that the LAN and the WAN interfaces on this router are ETH 0.1 and ETH 0.2. Then it hit me. This router is a router on a stick. It must only have one ethernet controller which then the OEM software creates VLANs for these LAN and WAN networks, you being none the wiser. The only difference here is the switch is embedded into the device, as opposed to being separate, as we see here today. There's definitely a reason manufacturers do this, along with implications that I'll talk about after the demo. Before we dive into the setup, I'd like to give a shout out to Exter. I've been using my Exter card holder and tracker since I first received mine two years ago, and I can say I still happily use it as my daily wallet. That is until Exter recently shared with me their Midnight Aluminum card holder and their new Finder card, powered by Apple Find Mine, both leaving me impressed. I've been using the card holder for a couple of months now, and it's been just as enjoyable as the carbon fiber one. First, transferring between card holders was quick and easy, since they both have the same form factor. For those who are stylish with their wallets and like to change up colors and textures, it's nice to have a second wallet option to switch between, depending on your fashion mood. The aluminum has a nice smooth finish to it, 
and personally, I really admire the midnight color. However, I'd really like to highlight the Finder card. I've enjoyed using their Chipolo Tracker card, and while it has worked for me, I was excited to hear when Exter's Finder card was released using Apple Find My. Being in the Apple ecosystem, I found it a perfect complement to my existing Apple AirTags. Functionally, it works just as you'd expect any AirTag does, with all the same features and the reliability you'd expect from Apple products. Not only that, but since it operates on the Apple Find My network, it means if you ever lost your wallet, its location would be broadcasted over the network, so long as anyone with an iPhone has been near it. I personally haven't had to use this, but it's reassuring to know that your wallet's movements can be tracked and not just identify where its last location was before you lost it. Plus, as an added bonus, the card is rechargeable, which makes it even better than an AirTag. No need to deal with cumbersome batteries that are just difficult to replace. Simply charge it and place it back into your wallet and you're good to go for months on end. So if you like what you see, head on over to Exter and use my code DEV at checkout or my link in the description below to unlock extra savings on top of Exter's current promotions. Not only do you get a great product, but also my thanks as your purchase helps support the channel. To get started, first we'll configure our OpenWRT Raspberry Pi 5 router and then our Aruba 1930 switch. You don't have to use this switch, just a layer three capable switch. Here, we are going to make the VLANs for our LAN and WAN that will eventually connect to the switch. Log into Lucy and from here, navigate to your interfaces. Once here, our default interface is simply a bridge device as our LAN. This is so we can access our LAN over Wi-Fi. We aren't going to worry about Wi-Fi in this video. For now, we'll create our VLANs using DSA and bridge VLAN filtering. I covered this topic in another video, so go check it out in the card above me. Navigate to the Devices tab. I'm going to create a new bridge device called BR as opposed to BR LAN, because this bridge will cover more than just a LAN network. While we're here creating it, we'll also edit the bridge VLAN filtering. In this section, we'll create our VLANs, one and two. First, check off Enable VLAN Filtering. For VLAN ID, Set it to 1, and under ETH0, set this VLAN to untagged. It is important you set this to untagged, because if you don't, you will be locked out of OpenWRT and you will have to edit the config files by plugging in a keyboard and monitor or accessing OpenWT over a serial connection. We'll repeat the process above, creating a VLAN with an ID of two, except this time we'll set this VLAN as tagged. We're done in this window, but if you want to create more VLANs for more networks, this is where you would do it. Then you would also tag those networks like you did with VLAN ID 2. Since we're done, we'll click Save. Let's go back to our Interfaces tab, and before we apply our changes, we need to modify our LAN interface. Click Edit. Next to device, change this to use BR1. This is our new VLAN device we created for our LAN network.
Now we can save and apply our changes. And if all goes well, we should still have access to Lucy. All right, we're back. So the changes took effect without locking us out. Awesome. Next, we'll create our WAN interface. This should be straightforward for anyone who's seen my other OpenWRT videos. Click Add Interface button on the bottom left. In the pop-up, name the interface WAN. Next to Protocol, leave it set as DHCP Client. Next to Device, choose the BR2 VLAN device we just created, and then click Create Interface. To finish this interface, click the Firewall Settings tab and add this interface to the WAN zone. Click Save, then Save and Apply to persist these changes. Now we're ready to move on to our switch. Go ahead and power on your switch, disconnect from your Raspberry Pi, and plug in to your switch. Accessing your switch will vary, depending on what type of switch you have, and the configuration will also vary, but the concepts will be exactly the same. After manually configuring my network for my interface on my computer, I can access my switch at 192.168.1.1. I'll put that IP in my browser and log in to the web UI. In the switch, Navigate to the VLAN configuration. Here, we will create our VLANs. We already have VLAN 1 created for us, so we'll create VLAN 2. Click the plus button in the VLAN configuration table. In VLAN ID or range, put 2. In VLAN name, we'll call this WAN. Click Apply to create the VLAN. Then we'll click Save at the top. Now with our VLANs created, we'll configure our ports or interfaces as shown in this UI. We're going to set the ports as follows. Interface 1 will be our WAN port with VLAN 2 untagged. This port will connect to our upstream modem or any upstream network that connects us to the internet. Interface 2 will be our WAN and LAN port with VLAN 2 tagged and VLAN 1 untagged. This port will connect to the Raspberry Pi. Lastly, interface 3 will be our LAN port with VLAN 1 untagged. And this port will connect to my computer, as it already is actually connected to my computer. Next, we'll edit the VLAN membership configuration. Since VLAN 1 is already untagged on all interfaces, we'll first add VLAN 2 on interface 1, then exclude VLAN 1 from interface 1 since that will be our WAN port. In the VLAN ID dropdown, select VLAN ID 2. Check off interface 1 and click the pencil. In the pop up, click the include radio button and leave the participation as untagged. Then click apply. Check off Interface 2 and click the pencil. Under Participation, click the Include Radio button, then under Tagging, click the Tagged Radio button, then click Apply.
Click VLAN ID drop down again and select 1. You'll notice that VLAN 1 is already excluded from interface 1. That's because when we untagged VLAN 2 on interface 1, it automatically excluded VLAN 1 from interface 1. That's because you can only have one untagged VLAN per interface. So it does this automatically. With that, we're done. Click Save at the top to finalize our changes. That completes our switch configuration. With our interfaces tagged, we should be ready to go. But first, I'll change my network adapter back to DHCP. Let's gather our Ethernet cables and plug each cable into their respective port. To confirm we're connected, let's check our computer's IP address. Perfect. This IP address confirms we are connected to the LAN network. Let's log into OpenWT as we did before. Great. This works too, further confirming our connectivity. Let's scroll down to see if we have a WAN IP address. Great, we do. This also confirms that we're successfully connected to the internet. We should be able to send an internet bound ping with no problem. Let's do that for good measure. That works too. One last thing. For those wondering, what about creating more networks? Easy. If you want to create more LAN networks, simply repeat the LAN VLAN process we just did. Same thing goes for WAN. If you want more WAN networks, say for failover internet, repeat the WAN VLAN process. We now have a successful functioning router on a stick. We've covered how a router on a stick works and how to set one up. Why would anyone use one? Well, for manufacturers, this is an easy way to save money. If a router board can be made with only one Ethernet controller, manufacturers have no reason to add more NICs and increase the cost, except for one reason, performance. When using one Ethernet controller, all network traffic, WAN and LAN, goes through it, thereby eating into its bandwidth limit with a separate Ethernet controller for WAN and for LAN, their bandwidth is separate, not shared. That means WAN traffic, or what we call north-south traffic, has its own dedicated bandwidth, while LAN traffic, what we call east-west traffic, also has its own dedicated bandwidth. This means you can get the fastest speeds on your network between you and the internet and between your devices locally. Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content and other content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. Are you just getting started with VLANs? Watch this video here where I explain how they work. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.